Um, welcome back. It was a little bit more than a five minute break, and I apologize for that. Uh, time spent, but I think it was well spent probably. Um, we will now open the floor with the commissioners to uh, discuss, contribute, make comments, or whatever they would like to make towards the 12 13 proposed budget. And we'll give everyone an opportunity to speak. And Mr. Owens, if you'll let us start with you, we will. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I said at the beginning of this uh, public hearing that it's all, my feeling has always been that I did not try to make up my mind until we heard from the public. Uh, tonight has been uh, a new experience. So I, I want everyone to accept that in his or her own feelings of what I mean by that. But we spent approximately five to six weeks going through study for the budget for the coming year. Uh, we had our uh, financial staff, we had our manager to meet with the various and different agencies uh, to try to uh, accommodate what the needs were with, within the confines of, of what monies that were available. Uh, we did that. Uh, we came back then uh, and voted on what we call a level one, which, which brought forth, excuse me, Eugene, <laughs> level one, which brought forth a budget that uh, was not pleasing to everybody but it was within the confines of, of what I think fiscal, financial, common sense gives you. Uh, that budget uh, was passed by a 5-4 vote by this board to bring it back for the public hearing. Uh, I voted against it, but not for the reason that I didn't think it was a good budget. Um, the manager has, has brought forth tonight here at the public hearing an alternative A and an alternative B. I personally think both of those are wrong. They're not within the confines of what we've talked about in our budget throughout the budget process. They're not within the confines of what this level one budget was. And I just spoke to the sheriff's wife, a lovely lady who I've loved for many years, sheriff. But uh, I... Uh, feel that yesterday this board, uh, through financing, through monies, uh, with the manager's uh, innovation, I suppose, brought forth 12 new cars for the sheriff. He should have had 12 last year and the 12 the year before, but he got 12 new ones yesterday. Or the money for it. What was it, 342000 Scott? Correct. All right. Uh, so, and I, I realize the urgency of what's been said here. I'm aware of the, the wants and desires and the anticipation. And the sheriff is all gun ho for participation and does an excellent job. Uh, just like a lot of other our agencies does. But the sheriff has in excess of $200,000 in his contingency fund. He hadn't done this, but people have portrayed he didn't have enough guns or he didn't have enough bullets. But he had $200,000 in a contingent fund he could buy popcorn ice cream with. That's being a little facetious. But he had a lot of authority with it. Uh, so with that having been said, I'm still in favor, uh, Madam Chair, of the level one budget and that uh, hope that the rest of the board could see feed that. And I'm opposed to alternate one for the specific reason of what it does create an impact upon the general fund for level uh, B it is because it's an additional increase in taxes in and above the one half cent we've already talked about in this level one. Thank okay. you, ma'am. Thank you. Mr. James? Well, I'm a little different. As most of you know, I guess I'm more conservative. First, I'm not going to vote for a tax increase. I believe that we need to live within our means. But I believe that we don't have to have a tax increase to take and to give the sheriff calls and things such as that because of the addition of money that he would bring in. I'm not even going to go into detail pertaining to that. Uh, 
I think a great deal of Commissioner Owens, but he and I, we don't see eye to eye, of course, on everything. And the next thing, Bo, that I want all of you, when we say 66 and a half cents, remember, you got your pie taxes. You got all of your other uh, fees and so forth. You got your EMS t tax. It's not 66 and a half cents. It runs up that close to 75 to 80 cents. For most of us, it doesn't mean much. It won't mean much to me. But if you're that poor little person and you're on minimum wage or you are an elderly person, it means a great deal. Let me say that to you. Whether you like it or not, I think a great deal of the three firemen that are here taught, most, uh, taught a lot of people in school. But we don't see eye to eye. I'm a firm believer that you got to live within your means, and I believe that Pitt County government needs to learn to live within now. So it's not going to get any better, ladies and gentlemen. It's not going to be better next year, whether you like it or not. You're going to face it again. You think it's different this year? Watch next year. It's going to be the same. Mark my word. I've been around this place a long time. I fought in World War II, got $21 a month. $10 combat pay and $10 overseas. $41. I won't go to that. That's, that's a long story. But the manager, of course, I want to correct you, Mr. Manager. You said when you were talking about the fire tax that all departments were now taxed. That's not true. Bethel and Belvoir do not have any taxes. And let me say this to you. Belfer has got to have tax. Belvoir does not have to have tax. And the reason that I am opposed to it, and I have said this before to each of you, I invite you to come out to our department. We got one of the best departments in Pitt County, and we will be the only one, as far as I'm concerned, that will not have taxes. And the reason that I am so opposed to it is because of community involvement. I believe once you go to taxes and the people themselves leave you alone and they will not support and you're going to find out that I'm right. It's happening in every department that's taking place. There are 20 departments. Out of every department this year, every one of them, none of them have brought the taxes down, but every one of them, but seven or eight of them have gone up in the taxes. They go up almost every year. Did you know that? But anyway, that's beside the point. And, when that time comes um, that to do what I need to do, Madam Chairman, I want to do that, as you know. That's not now, is it? Well, you know, if you want to bring that up for discussion, I would assume that sure. this is the time that you need to All say right. that. Uh, first, this is for the Bethel people, and since I represent them, they do not have a tax. There they have two departments. I suppose that correct me, Norley, if I am wrong. Well, they, they have a fire and a rural department, is what I was told. Be Bethel Town Department, under contract with the county, provides the Bethel Rural Fire Protection. So there's only one department. It's not. There's not two. I, I there. Well, they're, they're, but they Bethel. So I was told. Said to the rural people, you must come up with a fund. Your part. So let's get it straightened out. The, the town of Bethel came before the Board of Commissioners a year ago saying that they had been subsidizing the operations about $23,000. So you as the Board of Commissioners appropriated that $23,000 on top of the $10,000 we give every squad. The 6.75 cent proposed tax rate is the roughly the equivalent of the $23,000 that you appropriated last year, right. which they say is what they're subsidizing. They were subsidizing through town revenues. For the, on behalf of the rural. I was under the impression that it was the same as Wellables. It is one department, Mr. James, but it serves both the city and the and county the residents. All right. So the, the two districts. Okay, that's exactly right. That's only one party. There's municipal, we contract with municipal Bethel to provide the fire protection for the Out in the county. All right, but anyway, did not Bethel tell them that they had to come up with these funds? Basically, that's, yeah. they say they needed additional funds or they were not going to service the rural era. I don't think they were quite that strong. I think well, that's what I, but anyway, that is the reason, so to speak, that uh, 
and yeah. people there at Bethel. We have other departments under the same model. Aiden, Farmville, Winnable. No, no, no. Winnable's not anymore. They're not we anymore. Uh, I was trying to explain that to the public, so to speak, but evidently uh, I, I didn't have it exactly right. But anyway, that's the reason for that I will vote for, for Bethel. But for Belvoir, because we have about $90,000, and they say it's not much money, to me it's a lot of money, in the checking account, and because we've got good equipment, we've got uh, a nice fire department, I think, and I want to keep the people involved. I, I would like very much that it, for the new, two new ones, for Bethel to stay uh, what they have requested, which is 6.75, and Belvoir will be zero, and as I have explained those people, I will support them whenever they re the people that really need their support or the, that they help. Do we need for him to make a motion and let us vote on that as if we want okay. that for it to appear that way in the budget? Why don't we wait until everybody's had a chance to speak? Okay, okay. Huh? so yeah. when we get back to oh, you, know, we'll let you do that. But I, I think the procedure will be he'll have to make a motion and we'll have to vote to have that taken out. That's good enough. Okay. I'm satisfied okay. with that. Is that a but um, uh, I think the main thing is that like Commissioner Owens has said, we have listened. We've gone through a lot pertaining to the budget, and we have different philosophies. And uh, that's about the way it is, so I, okay. I yield. Thank you. Uh, Mr. McLawhorn. Thank you, Madam Chair. What I, what I think that the personally that level one alternative A proposal may be the best proposal, uh, I cannot support this. I cannot support this proposal due to the disproportionate effect that it would have on the many citizens that I represent. Those that are already suffering from low income, fixed, fixed incomes, or loss of jobs, and not able to meet basic needs to maintain their family structure. I can't see a tax increase. However, uh, I, I do believe from my heart that uh, after listening to Mr. Dave Robot with the uh, fire chief with Belvoir, he was talking in terms of the citizen who they have uh, contacted and they see the need, and this will be a reduction, as I see it, in uh, uh, 272 dollars per month. Uh, and so I think that's a tremendous deduction uh, in, in terms of uh, supporting of that need for an they, increase. They won't have any of the reduction. He doesn't, he hasn't. Let me go on and tell you another thing. I've had two fires in the Belvoir Township in the last five years. Both fires cost me several thousand dollars. Not, you know why? Because the state has rules that you can't, you got to go out there and put it out. It's a bunch of junk. I have How many fires you think they have in the Belvoir community? 12 to 15 a year. All right, I'll be, I'll, forgive okay. me, I'll be quiet. But Mr. I'll McGlone, have you have you right. I have always maintained that uh, the sheriff department should be able to use uh, the excess monies that they uh, make from the housing of federal inmates to purchase vehicles, and I continue to maintain that logic. I think that once you've gone beyond the call of duty and and, 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 and did such an excellent job, you should have uh, room to, 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 to use that money as to how you see fit, especially to, to purchase uh, vehicles. I maintain the fact that GPAC for $3,500, we should support that organization and keep that uh, uh, keep the, keep them on the, on the air. Uh, one of the things I wanted to say about the the sheriff department is that the communication system. I think we had a speaker that said that they received 31,000 calls in 2011. Now, um, I'm I'm on 31,000, 41,000, 41,000 in 2011. I, I understand that Winneville 
and Aiden have communication system, uh, Mr. Manager, and and uh, maybe Sheriff can can uh, can talk about this later on. That they could uh, that we could probably save some money. I don't know whether this has been explored or not. That if we let one of them utilize its own communication system rather than the sheriff having to uh, 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 maintain the one of the communication. I've gotten some calls on that. Uh, Aiden. Just to, to clarify, Winterville doesn't have a communication system, but mm -hmm. de depends upon the sheriff's office to do that. We've been talking about a, a cost recovery, charging them back for the cost of that service, which we've, we've I think the sheriff and myself have both been in contact with the town manager, but yeah. really have not been able to push that as probably as strong as we should. But okay. they've been reluctant to um, want to come to the table and pay for Who's the service. Who's been reluctant? The town. Town of Winterville? Yeah. Okay. Well, I just think that should be uh, pursued. Any any measures that we can use and utilize this, uh, to save some funding, especially as it relates to the sheriff's department. I have other things, but I, I, I yield at this time. Thank you, Madam okay. Chair. Okay. Um, Mr. Smith. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I think this is one of the hardest budget process that I have have ever been through. I've been on the school board and the hospital board and we've had some big budget decisions to make. When I look at the needs in this county, none of these budgets address what this county needs. But due to the financial situation of this county today, the nation and the world, I don't see no way that we can justify raising taxes to cover all the needs. We're going to have to adjust the size of the county government and what the county supports to our revenue. Now these are hard words to say. The Sheriff's Department needs new cars. Where are we going to get the money from? And I am agree with Mr. James one thing that he said. I don't see in the near future that the economic conditions a Pitt County or the United States is going to get a whole lot better. We cannot keep using fund balance. That is a no-no in my mind. To <clears throat> If we get the fund balance too low and our bond, bonding rate stops, the $100 million that this county owes, it will escalate to, there's no telling how many cent tax increase that we will have to pay. But I cannot f justify, in my mind, voting for a tax increase at this time. If the economy was growing, several new people coming into the area, and the economic conditions was better, yes, I would consider it. But today, I cannot. Madam Chairman. Okay, thank you, Mr. Garris. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, this has been uh, a challenge for all of us because we recognize that there are many needs and there are limited funds to meet those needs. Uh, as far as this budget is concerned, as I have stated earlier, I am supportive of the EMS tax rate adjustment up to 4.6 cents. That will keep them revenue neutral and it will keep them having the same amount of dollars that they have been operating on for the last two or three years, and that has worked well, so I'm supportive of that. Secondly, as far as the fire department, the, the Winterville Rural Fire Department, as I have stated earlier, I am supportive of them having a tax increase up to 4.4 cents from the two and a half cents that they currently have, and the reason I'm supportive of that is because they have worked very hard to get their rating back to a, an insurance rating of six, and they have accomplished that. So the citizens in that winter fire district are going to have an insurance premium reduction. And since they have worked hard to accomplish that, I think it's appropriate to increase that tax rate up to 4.4 cents. And by doing that, they still will have the fifth lowest rate out of the 20 fire districts. So I'm supportive of that. The, um, the total budget process, uh, during this process, I have received a total of seven contacts from citizens. Two of them are in the audience this evening. And those contacts have been pretty equally divided between supporting the sheriff 
to the amount that he is requesting, and the other half have said, don't increase my taxes. In fact, some have even said the penny and a half that I support in raising the rate to get us revenue neutral, some have even said that is a tax increase, and I, I just don't see it that way. I see that as a rate increase. It's revenue neutral. It's keep giving us the same level of revenue next year as we have had this year. The, and I do believe in listening to people. I have written the comments from each of those seven people with their names, so I know what their comments are. I have listened very carefully to the comments this evening of the 11 people that have spoke in support of the sheriff. And again, I appreciate, as I stated in my prayer, each of you coming out and expressing your opinion. That is very important. I believe in listening, and I believe in a compromise when it is appropriate. So my compromise this evening is that I still support level one, which is what we said uh, which, which is what I said earlier, but I do also support alternate one in addition to level one budget because, as I understand it, this will give the sheriff 50% of the revenue he collects to buy cars. And it is my understanding from our manager that the sheriff is supportive of this. Is that correct, Mr. Sheriff? Okay. So I am... That's my compromise after listening to all of this input. That still uh, will allow us to not have a tax increase, and it still will protect our fund balance. The, the, the problem I have with it and the compromise I have with it is that we will be treating uh, this department different from the other departments that collect revenue. But I'm okay with that. And, and I support that. So that's uh, my comments, uh, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Garris. Okay, um, Dr. Johnson. Madam Chairman, uh, two or three comments. Uh, first of all, I appreciate the careful consideration of my fellow commissioners to the uh, situation that we have. Uh, it's most difficult to arrive at a decision and and I would like to say to my fellow commissioners we do not have to make a decision tonight if we cannot uh, uh, reach a decision tonight uh, <coughs> we simply must approve a budget before the end of June um, as I told the county manager earlier today I I feel like that he did a complete evaluation of the needs and of the necessities of our county for the next budget year. And, and I believe his level one proposal is the best that we can do uh, under the circumstances. Uh, we can make additional adjustments during the year uh, and and uh, come up with additional policies, but I, I believe the level one is the better approach. Um, and uh, I, I know that that will be difficult for some of you who have spent your time to come up here tonight and make comments, but um, I... Uh, simply believe that's the better approach. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Okay. Oh, Mr. Hammond? I've said and I've listened tentatively to what has been said by commissioners, our manager, and our staff. And I want to personally thank the manager for coming to visit with me one-on-one -on, -one on two occasions to answer questions that I had and to enlighten me on some areas of the budget proposal that he has made and I thank all of the citizens that have come tonight to to share in this discussion. I will not be in support of uh, any tax increase or fee increases and as has been forestated 
the sheriff has, I have been informed, has some funds that can be used discretionarily by him for his department. And I think the commissioners for the support of the vehicles that they purchased, uh, went on, agreed to purchase on yesterday, I think it was a dozen. And I have a phone number for the sheriff. A gentleman called me that was a friend of mine that saw this discussion on TV and all, and he wants to he wants the sheriff to know that he's not a rich man, but the Lord had blessed him, and he would buy you a car, a brand new one, <laughs> if you would just give him a call and let you, let him know what type of specification you had had to make. And I didn't state a a, a, a town <laughs> meeting, but. I wind up having citizens in my district come to the Golden Living Center where I'm now a resident. And one lady came out and told me that her son worked at Washington and and lost his job in 2011, and he can't pay the taxes on his vehicles or car or house, and. No tax increase could he support. And so she was just one citizen, but she brought some others with her. So I'm, I, I'm, in, a, I'm in agreement that in these conditions that we are facing now, that the last thing the citizens of Pitt County need to, to face is a tax increase. And uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Hammond. Uh, Mr. Webb. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, thank you to the manager and our staff for the budgets they've created as well as the alternatives and uh, thanks to the public and department heads that came out and the firemen and deputies and so on uh, when we look at it overall in the budget and the way it's been set up at the base level budget which I can support which is the level one it only kicks the can down the road we're gonna be right back here next year alternate a rolls the dice on whether or not the money will come in because it may not if you have three or four good roundups and they go over too far over with the jail they have to send some of them fed inmates back so then you don't have that money coming in i'm mostly supportive of alternate b because what we do in that is we exercise some leadership we make a tough decision and we handle the problem today with revenue that's going to continue and it takes care of the sheriff's issues but it also if you read it provides for down the road replacing our fleet for other areas uh, because although those cars don't operate at the same kind of conditions that the sheriff's cars do they do operate on the road and they need to be safe for the public as well <coughs> so we have to make a tough decision and it's not easy but we really need to rip the band-aid and do it. And honestly, alternate B doesn't go far enough to provide the minimal level of service that gets more expensive every single year. It's not that we're not operating within what we have. It's that things get more expensive. Petroleum prices change. Service prices change. Demand on our services as the economy goes down changes. And in the, on the local government level, you get the most bang for your buck. And we need to quit talking in terms of broad terms of tax increase because then people will automatically associate us with the federal government and think that we're going to raise a billion dollars to waste on some program when what we're talking about is two dollars a month per one hundred thousand dollars so if your house isn't even worth a hundred thousand dollars you're not even going to hit a dollar seventy five cent and if your property value went down as you saw fifty five percent of the people aren't even going to see an increase only thirty percent of the people and I'm part of that thirty percent that's willing to give up the two dollars so that we can have a, a budget that takes care of the future and it's at a bare minimum that we're taking care of the future because we're not even allotting for the positions that we need and running off a skeleton budget I'm sorry a skeleton crew just to barely keep the ship alive and then you look at the way we're doing things with one these departments that are generating revenue and keeping it in well our school system has four million dollars we have the best teachers I think because I've met a lot of them I think we have the best teachers in the state and as I travel throughout the state with the um, other commissioners and with the association of commissioners and you realize we're very blessed for what we have here 
And it's not like that $4 million is going to support them and buying supplies so they don't have to buy it out of their pocket. They have been overpaid by $4 million. When a sheriff makes more money or another department makes more money, they have to turn it in. That's $4 million or half of it, $2 million, that could go directly to our fund balance. And when you look at the bang for a buck, if you look at U.S. Department of Education statistics, if you take out the charter schools of the districts, we rank 95th in education as far as EOG scores go in com combination. If you insert the charter schools, which they count because they are paid for with public money, there's 180 school districts in this state. We're 146. We're getting a lot more bang for a buck out of the sheriff and out of other departments than we are because it's not our teacher's fault. As Nancy said, learning starts at home. Those teachers can't put a Band-Aid on everything that comes in there and fix everything that's wrong with every student because they're outstanding teachers and they're doing the best they can with the little bit they have and it's not a money problem there. I support the second alternate, alternate B, because it is a substantive, it's a well thought out budget plan that makes us more solvent for the future and it honestly doesn't go far enough and we really need to exercise some leadership as far as the tax rate goes and look at our bordering counties, what their tax rates are in total versus the services we provide to the amount of citizens we provide, including citizens from those other counties. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Um, at this time, I'll I think we were going to hear from you, Mr. James, with a motion. Oh, yes. I move that uh, the tax rate for the Belleville Service District be zero for this year. Okay. Is there a second to that motion? Out of respect for a commissioner, I'll, I'll second it. Okay. I think that uh, if I understand, that would be just that district that Mr. James represents. That's correct. And he illustrates to us that... Uh, citizens out there do not do not desire it and I second it for that purpose. Okay. Is there any discussion? Uh, I, I would like to say we normally as a board respect the position of the commissioner that represents that district. So I have to respect his position and I will support him. Okay. Uh, Commissioner John a little bit different, Madam Chairman, uh, <laughs> We have a three-person committee for that district, and they have made a request, and, uh, and, and I think that we should go along with the request of the three persons who represent that. Madam Chairman, may I answer that? We invite the three people to come if you want to hear those. And you'll be surprised at what you hear. Okay. That's beside the point. Um, yes. If I can synergize to comment, I don't necessarily want to sway the board eat one way or the other, but I do want to state that North Carolina General Statutes does put the responsibility of fire protection on county government, and we do partner with the, not, the volunteer nonprofit fire departments to provide that service. So I just want to interject that comment, that thought. Okay, thank you. Mr. McLaughlin? Madam Chair uh, and, and fellow commissioners, I also re represent the Belvoir uh, area uh, as the District A, uh, CDA District 1 and 2. Now, I, I, I must say, I, Commissioner James and I agree uh, a lot on things, and I, and I have to say that. But, you know, I, 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 I'm, being, I'm talking from the heart. I'm being realistic. I talked to Mr. James about this, that, uh, you know, once you hear uh, what the citizens want, and once you hear what the, what the people are proposing, the fire chief, he was here. He made an a, a adamant uh, a communication in terms of what, 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 what he's done some research on. And when you can save those citizens in Belvoir that kind of money, I have to support it, Mr. Jane. I have to because it wouldn't be an increase. It would be a saving. So that's why I'm look, that's what I'm looking at it. And I certainly agree with what was, what was presented by the chief uh, in terms of making his uh, recommendation. So I cannot support not doing that. I, I, I support a savings, and that was a savings. Thank you. I Anyone wish it else? were a savings. Anyone else have any discussion? Uh, Madam Chairman, I would just like to add now, 
we have a commissioner from that district that does not support the right. increase and a commissioner from that district Let's that does. Vote. Therefore, <laughs> I can vote any way I want to. That's right. Let's, <laughs> Let's just vote. Okay. Then the people out there will decide. And those three commissioners, uh, uh, Commissioner Johnson, Motion. you Excuse talk me? to those three commissioners, I mean those on that commission, okay. you're going to be surprised. Just a moment. Excuse me. Clarify his motion was for Belvoir and Bethel, or no, just, just Belvoir. Bethel deserve they, they, they've got to have one. Okay, we got it. Mr. Webb, did you Thank have a comment before we vote? Yeah, it'll, it'll be very brief as compared to my last one. Uh, when it comes to um, something like this, as much as I do trust Mr. James, and I, I like to support you, believe it or not, but uh. I trust the people on the ground, and nothing we do here can't be walked back if we can't show that there was a savings or an insurance change. Uh, I, th I think it's worth the risk. I trust his opinion. Okay. Thank um, you. We'll vote then, and um, would you restate the motion, please? The motion is to set the billboard tax rate at zero. Okay. Let's vote, please. Okay. It fails. Okay. Thank you very I much. I have one comment to make. Yes, sir. I want all those names, and I hope we'll be able to pay a lot of you back, the Belvoir people. And you remember that. And it'll start oh, tonight. Sheriff, that sounds like a threat to me. It Are is. you listening, please? It is. <laughs> okay. It is. And especially okay. these people that voted to raise taxes. I'm <laughs> pushing it. I'll start now. <laughs> okay, let's um, move on. Is there anyone else who would like to make a motion in rel uh, relationship to the budget? You got to vote on the budget. Everyone's I'll, I'll make a motion. I'll start the process. I make a motion that we support the level one budget with the addition of the manager's recommended start. alternate one <laughs> that was presented this evening. Alternate A. Alternate, alternate A, A, excuse me, A. Okay. Only one motion. Is that a second? Yes. Is there a second to that? I'll second it. Any discussion? Now read the motion. Madam Chairman, I, I don't have a substitute motion just because I can support A, but I, I, I prefer B, and I really think. Uh, so I'm making a substitute motion that we support level one, alternate B, because that is the most common sense be it's not putting it off we got if we go a or regular we are putting this off for 365 days and we're going to revisit this next june and we're going to talk about it and hammer it out again with the same amount of money that's not coming in because i agree with you mr james that's not going to get back but in the next year we're going to see increased services and we're not going to have the money to pay for it. and so i that's my uh, Substitute motion that we support alternate B. Okay. Is Madam there a Chair, second? May I, may I ask the question okay. first? Okay. Can I see if there's a second to his motion first? I might second it if I can ask my oh, question. Oh, okay. Go right ahead. Please do. All right. Glenn, is it your understanding of this that uh, part of that money, if it's passed and is raised, could be used to help the uh, detention center for the shortage? Or is it going to be restricted just for cars? My understanding is uh, restricted to capital replacement needs not payroll that, that that's why that's why i made the point that it doesn't go far enough to really cover the needs of the county but it does do a very minimum to ensure that we keep the motor and public safe keep responses for our deputies down when our dss in a year when these things roll around with this coming in our dss workers our health service workers that are out there in cars that they're in something that's not going to fall apart see that's my problem with a because not covering all the bases, which should come through the managers, what bothers me about that. But uh, playing the devil's advocate for a moment, uh, again to later by the vote, I'll second his substitute motion. Okay. But and do we need any more clarification on the Mr. Manager as far as how that money? If yeah, if I can, just um, for the board and for the public's benefit, alternate B is basically a half a penny increase in additional to the revenue neutral rate increase of one and a half or adjustment. And in the first year, the, um, the half a penny raises about a half million dollars. We said in the first year we would dedicate the totality of the proceeds towards additional vehicles for the sheriff's department. And then in the following year, assuming that the rate is continued, we would then look at the totality of all the vehicles in the fleet of the county. 
again, continuing a portion of those would be sheriff's office, but we'd look at it. Uh, other departments that have pent up the demands fleet, and the needs. The county fleet. Correct. Okay. So for the first year, the additional five hundred thousand dollars would all go to the sheriff's department for vehicle replacement. Is that right? As proposed, unless you okay. modify it. Okay. But, and Mr. James. But you're you raising your taxes even how? Have you thought about that? It's a quarter. You can I mean, call it, it a, a quarter, a quarter or any, but whatever but you want to call it. Is we're talking about real numbers, and real numbers is a, a quarter. It's a piece of bubble gum a month. You got some expensive bubble gum. So anyway, I don't, say much. <laughs> I don't believe it. Okay, we uh, we have heard it. any other comment relative to this um, substitute motion, which we will have to vote on first. Correct? Okay. Um, we're ready to vote then. Which, which motion are we voting on now? Okay, we're voting for <laughs> keeping the uh, broad budget uh, level one budget that we had already brought forward with a 0.5 uh, increase and the money going the first year for car replacement for the sheriff's department. Clarify this Is that correct? Fees. Yes. Not to clarify this includes the fee increases as well, or does it not? Does this motion include the fee increases as well that's in the level one budget? Yeah, everything okay. that's in I the level one budget. I just wanted to clarify that <coughs> openly. Okay. Um, if we'll vote, please. This is a substitute okay. motion that I just restated, and we can do it again. All right. So you if you vote for it, even one of these, you're going to be voting for a tax increase. Is that's that right. correct? That's right. Okay, that's all I want to know. Okay, it fails, uh, so we go back to the uh, first motion that was made by Commissioner Garris, which was the level one budget, uh, let me know if I'm stating it correctly, with the alternative A, which would, um, at the end of the fourth quarter of budget year 13, 12, 13, the 50% um, of the revenue earned above what is in the budget, is that correct? We'll go to, what is what? The federal right, the federal inmate revenue will go to the things. sheriff to be used for capital needs. Is that right? Correct. Okay, thank you very much. Um, let's vote. Okay. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. That motion failed. Yes, sir. I move that we approve uh, level one of the budget. Okay. Is there a second to that motion? I second, Madam Chairman. Okay. The motion has been made that we approve the level one budget. Are we not going to do the 3500 for You're not going to make that nice amount. Would you pay? Yeah. Nothing. That's okay. Um, and we got a second. Any discussion? Madam Chairman. That's yes. Good. This, I can't support the, this far of the baseline because it, it doesn't do anything. It only buys us 365 days to revisit this and we were not elected to kick the can down the road. We were elected to deal with it. This does not go far enough to protect our deputies. It doesn't build in anything to help our other employees with cars and things. It doesn't handle the needs of the county. And it's going to put us in a precarious situation. We're the only county our size not adding the fund balance. It, never mind. I, I've said all okay. I say. Um, Yes, Mr. Owens is. I think all of us, probably Glenn, would uh, put a lot of credence in in the remarks that you just made. But budget matters, you almost are restricted on going from a year to year basis when you can't get what you want to accomplish the whole deal. 
I know we think about long-term planning, long-range planning, long-range financing, but as it appears to this boy at this time, this is the best shot. We got till July 1st. Okay. Right. Go ahead. <laughs> Just a minute. Uh, Commissioner uh, Johnson was next. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I, uh, I think Mr. Owens is right. Even if we voted for something for the next year, it couldn't become effective. We'd have to vote it again. Uh, we, we only have the legal authority, I believe uh, our attorney will uh, agree with that, to vote one budget year. And uh, yeah. so for one budget year, I think uh, Mr. Owen's motion is the better approach. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. But, but again, uh, on Mr. this James, motion- Mr. James, would you like to speak? Yes. Yes, Mr. This James. motion that we'll be voting on now, again, you will be raising your taxes. That's the only thing I want to say, so you know how you're voting. Revenue neutral, Mr. Jones. Yes, still revenue taxes. neutral tax rate increase. That will be. Okay, tax rate increase. That's right. Okay, anyone else? Okay, let's vote on this motion, which is the vote for the level one uh, budget as it stands now. Okay, am I the only one that's Okay. Good night. That's it. Do we need to reconvene at a future time? Or you may, if there are other considerations um, that the board wants to address. And, you know, Any other considerations we want to address relative yes, to? Yes, sir. Now, I, I don't know how I, I'm going to say it like I, just like I, I, I see it. You know, I, I stated. Uh, several times that I would like to see the sheriff keep the monies that he earned in excess of, the, uh, of with federal inmates, that he can use those, that money to purchase fe uh, uh, additional vehicles. Now, also, and, and you can, you can, you can uh, 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 Mr. Manager, tell me how you want me to, 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 to utilize this motion, uh, uh, Madam uh, Turner. Uh, also would like to see GPAC funded for thirty five hundred dollars, a small amount, to keep that radio to keep that uh, a public access station uh, funded. Now, I like to make that in in the form of a motion that we do that. Uh, if that, Madam Attorney, that would be appropriate, and then such a motion um, would be regarded as directing the manager. To, re to bring something else back before the board. If you're asking him to, uh, yes, the motion is to rearrange the proposed budget to accommodate that, oh. yes, then that would be appropriate. I'll second this motion. A budget amendment in the first of the year to take it out of contingency for $3,500. That would be directed through the, that motion. Madam he Chair. would bring it back as saying, you tell her what you we just said. We could either do one of two things, reduce the contingency appropriation by the $3,500 and include appropriation for GPAT, or two, bring back a budget amendment in the new fiscal year at a contingency for $3,500. I don't Right. Legally, which you, whichever you recommend. Whichever Seven. one do you think is? Both accomplish the same effect, but you would be making a motion based upon amending a budget that has not yet been adopted. And so I think the first thing you need to do before you modify a budget is adopt a budget oh, yeah. and if you haven't adopted a budget then you need to give direction to the manager as to what this board wants to see in a budget because of the level one proposal and all of the alternates um, a greater than majority of the board has not been satisfied with any of the proposals before it so we need to put something different into the budget to get something different out of it so that should be what um Commissioner McLaughlin's motion is that he come that the um, manager comes come back to us with that thirty five hundred dollars. That is what I would and, and, for and that the chair and the chair for lot. Yes, ma'am. Okay, together. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I want both of them. Which was alternative A? No, ma'am. Okay, it's not. Yeah. It's not yes, alternative. It no, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not alternative. Yeah. No, I'm not voting for alternative. 
Okay, no. I was just saying that is what was being offered to the sheriff to get his cars. Well, what, what, whatever, whatever, you know, you, you're stating. I'm, I'm saying simply that I'm not for, or we voted alternative A down. That, that's, okay. that's, a, that's a done deal. I'm saying that I'm, I, I want the manager to come back with an alternative proposal to allow the sheriff to money raised from the housing of federal inmates, that he will keep that money, to, an additional money to buy and purchase vehicles, also to support $3,500 for GPAC. However the manager can do that, I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting that he does Okay, that. that's your motion. And That's did right. we get a second? I second. Okay, second. we got a second. Okay, Mr. Owen, you discussion? One, one point of information. If I remember when the TV issue came up and Scott responded the other day that um, that you said some state funds were coming and that you had something that could supplement to, uh, to accomplish what the people were asking for? What I was saying was they hadn't taken into account $12,500 additional PEG channel dollars that are passed through the city of Greenville to GPAT. So there's still a difference between that $12,500 and $16,000 that we had been appropriating in the past of $3,500. I think that's where Commissioner McLawhorn has the, the difference of $3,500. Well, that just will put them that at their budget in. as they presented it fully funded, the $3,500. Second point of information. Yes, sir. As I understand Mr. McLawhorn's motion, whoever seconded, you've got two issues in that motion. One is dealing with the uh, revenues uh, from federal prisoners and the $3,500. Mr. McLawhorn, is that correct? That is correct. All right. As the attorney said a while ago, that is talking about an amendment to the budget before we, before we get a budget. Well, I also further stated that he brings a budget back to include that. Do you want a budget that has a tax increase or not? I guess it would be my... No, we, I, I vote against tax increase. Then we need to cut another million and a half in expenditures to drive back down to a 66.5 Do what you got to do, Mr. Manager. I mean, that will be the equivalent of 30 positions. These are live body positions within the organization. We've cut 40 positions plus through either vacant or through the early retirement program, but to get get the tax rate down to where to the, the rate neutral of sixty six and a half cents, we'll have to identify thirty positions. And I identified for you in the budget workshops by functional area of government where those would come, whether public safety, whether sheriff, whether health, DSS, planning, inspections, could be manager's office, could be I mean thirty positions across the board. Madam Chair, I believe we need a vote on this, and then I've got a motion. Okay. I've got some. Uh, well, one wait a minute. Excuse me. Question. I've got Johnson, Webb, and then I'll do Garris. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, I want to say again that we do not have to adopt a budget tonight. We have another meeting scheduled in June, and uh, we can vote on a budget at that time. Uh, Madam Chairman, I'm be with you. Okay, Justin, <laughs> you have a motion <laughs> pending. Do you already have, have a motion, motion on the floor? floor and we oh, can't I mean, adjourn. Is all. Mr. Webb. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, I, I, I support part of this motion with the 3500 for GPAT, and, and I do support the revenue on the uh, the Fed bed, but here, here's the issue. If we go with the rate neutral and don't go up Two dollars a month, and it's not even two dollars per hundred thousand. You ain't I'm just story. telling you, it's not but two dollars a month at the most. And we ain't gonna need the revenue for the sheriff's cars because he's gonna have to send 14 of them to the house. We're gonna have to fire people. We're gonna have to fire 14 deputies. We're gonna have to fire how many? 11 out of public health, something like that. Um, we got the so I mean it is pointless to say that we're gonna let him keep the revenue because he's gonna have empty cars sitting there because there ain't gonna be no deputy to put in it. We have got to make a tough decision. It ain't easy. I don't want to vote for a tax increase. But when you look at the real numbers, it's change in your pocket. You can probably go in any of our pockets and get that much out right now, at least. And, and that's why I supported the alternative B, because it does do future planning. I know that we don't have the legal authority to plan for future years in our, um, 
in our tax rate, and we can't continue it for future years, but we do have the moral authority to make a decision and set a precedent of where we're going to stand and what we're going to support and the services we're going to provide. And that's, that, that's the minimum. That's the minimum. We're going to go backwards. We're going to fire 40 people, send them home. They'll still be with the county because they're going to have to be on the county dole anyway because we're going to have to provide services because they ain't going to have no job. Uh, yes, the manager so and then Mr. McLaughlin. I just want to make a comment in terms of setting the tax rate. It's been the history of Pitt County government, and the Pitt County Board of Commissioners, that the only point in time that the board has really ever considered a rate increase has been in a year in which revaluation has been performed on the budget. Since my being here, 2004, 2008, and 2012. In between those years, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, not only Brian, we have not, the board has not implemented a tax increase. So I guess this is kind of the, the, the year is what I'm trying to say. Okay, Mr. McLaughlin, I have you, but I had Mr. Garris. Oh, yeah. It's my understanding that uh, Mr. McLaughlin's motion then would be that we support level two, which has the rate staying at 66.5%, right? That's correct. Isn't that right? Is that what level two has? Yes, sir. Which means that we've got to find another million and a half dollars in cuts. And I just. Or income. Uh, which is. And I want to speak to that. Two or places. income. Just a moment. Two places. Yeah, but income would be a tax. Uh, a tax no, 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 no. You've got four million upstairs in one place. Oh. Uh, what? Use your head. But we can't get no, it. No, you, you can use yeah. part of it. We can't get it. Part of it. Uh, there's Once three million, them, it's almost four million. The county Where doesn't have it? the legal authority to we can't get make it from them. The public schools. I, I'm not talking about. Well, well, you need to share with some of us. Before I've we already. Lynn was the one that told me about it. As a matter of fact, up, uh, the, up the upstairs, and then you can look at the three oh four oh one k as to how many how many hundred thousand is going into that. That's well a lot. Okay, Mr. McLaughlin, you are next. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I think Commissioner Garris said it well. Uh, uh, my my motion would be uh, to uh, uh, keep the tax rate as it is currently, and to uh, uh, adopt in additional uh, those uh, two items that I forestated. That would be my motion. Okay. Uh, if we're ready, we'll vote. Do you have a second on this motion? Yes, yes, Mr. Hammond. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. We're voting. To keep the tax rate. Mm -hmm. that, yes, it is. All yeah. right. Yes. yes, sir. Give it to, give us the, the Your motion. motion. Got it. Um, for the manager to come back to the board with an alternative proposal to allow the sheriff to retain revenues collected from the housing of federal prisoners and to fund GPAT in the amount of 3500 No, 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 no. To keep the tax. It's level two. It's a level two. Level two, level two budget. Level two budget. Level two budget. Level two As budget. presented in budget workshops, I assume. So, so are you adopting a budget? No, no, no. You're just adopting. We're voting for, for those two proposals to, to be included, to come yeah, back to us. You are voting on it if you go with that other one. I think you I will be. I think they are mm -hmm. voting on the budget ordinance. Mm -hmm. By statute, when you adopt the budget ordinance, you adopt a rate and a dollar amount. If you are going to take $1.5 million out of your bottom line, you have to tell me what to cut. We don't go back after the fact and take out people or take out copier supplies or take out capital Anything. that doesn't already exist this board has to tell me tonight what it is you are willing to give up to take that rate down to 66 and a half cent we have got to identify 1.5 million dollars worth of things in this budget that we can take away in order to adopt a 66 and a half cent rate because right now our line item detail totals a 68 cent rate. It is not staff's decision. It is the elected body of Pitt County's decision. If it's 30 people, tell me which 30 people. If it's take away long-term funding to Pitt County schools, tell me that. 
I need some direction on what to cut in order to bring in a budget that lives on 66 and a half cent. I recognize this is my last budget with you all, but it is time to decide what is our priority and let's fund it. And if our priority is to stay at 66 and a half cent and make do for one more year, tell me what we can cut because Scott and I have held staff down, have held vacancies, have said don't buy that, don't travel there, till we are at a point where staff morale is in the gutter Staff cannot keep going without some direction for the future. So what is it you value that we need to fund in this budget, and what is it you are willing to give up to live at 66 and a half cent? We had identified in the budget workshops on the presentation on um, the, the Tuesday, the 22nd, they would take 11 positions in general government, 15 in human services, and 14 in public safety to fill the void to stay at a level two budget. So whether it's those positions or otherwise, that, that's... Is it those positions? Is it funding to schools? Is it decimating benefits to your staff? We need some direction on what it is you can live without when we march forward with a budget. All right, Mr. Manager, and to you. I've been telling you for three years <laughs> I've been telling you for one year I wasn't voting for a tax increase. And I asked you to bring a budget back saying that. But no budget was brought back for that. Level two budget. You had a level two, two budget, budget that accomplished well, that goal. I, I still am not satisfied because I believe that there are other ways that we can bring in more revenue and so forth. But we'll, we'll, we'll yeah, And, and staff has been coming forward for probably the last five years telling you this day was coming. We are spending fund balance. We are living beyond the current tax rate. We've got to make systemic changes to the size and shape of our operation in order to live within our means. And that means uncomfortable decisions. And right now, it might mean laying off live bodies if that's the cut you make, because we don't have any more vacancies to give up. Every vacancy I've had in the last three years, y'all have taken. Every vacancy a whole lot of departments have had already gone. We've reached a point where what is it we want to do in Pitt County and be in Pitt County? Madam Chair. Yes. Is a substitute motion in form? You can make one, yes, sir. I move that we adjourn in light of what the financial officer just said, that we do not have the germane information to vote on a budget at this time. Second a motion. Okay, so my question is, what are we going to do different between now and the time we reassemble? There's got to be consensus enough to vote on a, a motion, Mr. Garris. Yeah. So is, what is staff again? supposed to do when we, what are they supposed to bring back to us the next time we are together? My suggestion would be for him to do just like he did with this, and bring back something that in his judgment this board will accept. I tell you what, I would not want that responsibility because we are totally split. I agree uh, with that. If I can mention too, the um, I know there are board members who will be um, unavailable out of state the second, the third, and fourth week of June. So I would I'd recommend if he wants to come back, to come back this week, mm -hmm. tomorrow or, or Thursday. Otherwise, you're not going to have a full nine array of nine board members here at the table to vote. And I just remind you as well that um, it requires five votes to pass your budget, not just a majority of those folks present, but five votes. So, my Madam Chair, this, this vote that we are, we are currently voting, so this vote that we have now is not, is it, it, void based upon what Melanie just said. That's what you're saying? No, we're well, saying well, that that's going to have to be taken off because that was, we'll have to vote on because the substitute on the motion substitute. first. Um, could I ask a question of the attorney? Yes. Is there a possibility that we could have a meeting, another workshop meeting, we could call it that, um, this week, whether it's um, yes, what is today, Tuesday, maybe Thursday, and we, or even tomorrow. I don't know how everybody's schedule stands. Yes, you may recess this meeting to a later time, or you may call and advertise a special meeting or an emergency meeting. I'd probably recommend that you recess this meeting 
to another time. Right. And let that next meeting we have be a workshop type meeting in which we can discuss freely some of the concerns that we have. Could it be a try workshop to, with the ability to adopt a budget ordinance if you came to yes, consensus? Yes, we can do yes, anything we want to. Just try to clear the table a little bit yes, based sir. on what's happened here. Uh, whoever made my motion as a second, I'd like to withdraw my motion to adjourn. Okay. okay. Then you can go from there, ma'am. Okay. Um, could we recess? Um, how does tomorrow afternoon look for any of you for a workshop? I prefer tomorrow night. Tomorrow night? Tomorrow night. Would, be would that be okay? Six o'clock okay? Yeah. Does that suit everybody? Okay, then I would like to recess. Do we have to have a vote? Um, yeah. Yes, okay. you will, but you may want to clear because it appears that some folks voted yeah. before the substitute Mr. motion James, is entered. if you'll just vote so we can clear the screen. And I will, this, so right. this will not count for it anything. It won't count for anything. Does okay. the original motion need to be withdrawn as well by Mr. McLaughlin and Smith? Because the substitute motion just was by Commissioner Owens. Well, no, that Mr. Owens's motion was withdrawn, wasn't it? Yeah. To adjourn. But that was, a motion on the floor that was right a on. substitute motion. So, so we, do we also have to have Commissioner McLaughlin's motion the original withdrawn? Motion. If the substitute motion is was gone, withdrawn, was withdrawn, then you have to vote on Mr. McLaughlin's unless he withdraws it. Okay. Unless your motion to recess is a substitute motion. Well, do McLaughlin I have to make a motion you don't for recessing? Um, well, you no, withdrawing. not necessarily. Okay. Well, well, based upon the, the, the information that Melanie shared, I, I will draw that. Okay, okay. So now, I would like to determine that we have a, we recess until tomorrow evening, Wednesday evening, at 6 p.m. back here for an additional budget workshop. All right, so we will not be voting on the budget then tomorrow night. It will be a workshop. Well, we can, but right now it's set up as a workshop for us to talk and discuss. Anytime we get together, we can vote on anything we want to, Mr. And Jones. Let me, and let me clarify as well Move. that it's that you are recessing your meeting, which was scheduled to be the public hearing. And so that's what's going to carry over. You can convert your continued discussions into a workshop style meeting, right. but you're, you're carrying it on the notice for your, um, for your for meeting you with public hearing meeting. tonight. So you right. can still conduct official action because you're still under the, yes. the premise of an official meeting of the Board of Commissioners. But That's we correct. could do that in the, work, in the previous workshops. You we sure could make motions Absolutely. and do that anytime we're together. So I have that motion. Is there a second to recess until tomorrow? Second. Thank you. Let's vote, please, for recessing until 6 p.m. tomorrow night. I did. Okay. I guess I did. <laughs> I, I thought I could recess. Yes, I want to make a motion that we adjourn. No, we just recess, so we're already done. We're really, we're, 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 we're just recess, so we don't need to adjourn. No, you're done.